You know, if there's one thing I've learned in all my years watching movies, it's the bad ones come in a lot of different flavors. On the one hand, you have movies that are cheesy, but also funny and entertaining. Then there are movies that are technically well done, but are also slow and tedious. And then there's movies which combine the worst aspects of both those kinds. The cream of the crap, if you will. Movies like the one I'm going to talk about today, Bigfoot. Look, I'm not an unreasonable guy. I didn't expect a movie called Bigfoot to be a masterpiece or cure cancer or anything. But I thought at the very least it could supply some decent B-movie entertainment. I mean, just look at this cover. We got a giant monster lifting a motorcycle above his head while a cop shoots at it with a Tommy gun. And in the background there's a motorcycle gang and a buxom woman tied to a tree. That is one awesome poster. And check out these quotes. The greatest monster movie since King Kong? Wow, these guys must have really liked this movie. Or whatever movie they were talking about, because I find it hard to believe they meant this piece of crap. You see, far from being a lost treasure, Bigfoot is instead a big smelly turd which should have stayed buried. But for your entertainment, I'm gonna dig it up. Alright, I guess I put this off long enough. Let's get started. You know you're in trouble when even the opening credits are ashamed to be seen with this movie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. The eighth wonder of the world? King Kong is the eighth wonder of the world. You'll be lucky if you even qualify as ape. I guess it starts out innocently enough. We have a woman named, uh, somebody, getting on a plane to go, um, somewhere, when all of a sudden there's a problem with the plane's, uh, something. Mayday! 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 I wish I was in a better movie! I'm not leaving anything out here. Malibu Barbie just gets on a plane with no explanation, something goes wrong, and then she just bails out. We're not even ten minutes in and already I'm confused. Jesus, go easy on the organ there, movie. Speaking of organs, judging by this exquisitely framed crotch shot, I guess what they say about people with big feet isn't true after all, because I don't see a thing. Holy shit. Bigfoot scared the frames out of her. Oh, and if you thought that was a weird beginning, just wait till you see how our other main characters are introduced. That's right, with a dialogue-free driving scene that goes on for two whole minutes. Yeah, because that works so well for Manos the Hands of Fate and Rock and Roll Nightmare. You know, if they're really going to do the whole endless driving scene thing, I might as well set the mood. This is Jasper and Elmer, a couple of traveling salesmen. Jasper is played by horror movie legend John Carradine. Now, John Carradine's presence in a movie is something of a horror movie paradox. On the one hand, you're guaranteed an entertaining performance from one of the most prolific character actors of all time. On the other hand, it's usually a good sign that the movie's pretty shitty. After they get finished driving in real time, Jasper and Elmer come to a general store just as a gang of bikers are leaving. Allow me to introduce myself. I'm Jasper B. Hawks. Uh, my associate and I would like to cool our dry throats with some good cold beer. There's not a drop of beer in the house. That wild motorcycle outfit just left here took the last can we had. Oh man, no beer? Damn teenagers. Make him get that back. We need to size up our drinks, Mike. Oh wait, did I say teenagers? I meant 30 year olds. Ah well, there may not be any beer, but at least Edith Bunker likes you. Let me get them a couple of Pepsi. Oh, that's a good girl. Fine daughter, that daughter of mine. We're the same age. Well, there's a whole lot of nothing going on here. Let's see what the bikers are doing. You and Peggy go on. We'll, uh, join you later. Where are you going? Can't you see they want to be alone? I We're not you. back by the time you leave. Uh, don't worry. We'll catch up to you on the road. You play nice, here. And don't step over my line again, asshole. One of the bikers breaks off from the group for some alone time with his girlfriend, and... Wait a second, where'd the blanket come from? It wasn't on his bike earlier. Uh, whatever. Is there anything exciting going on here? will be seated during the thrilling laying on a blanket staring up at the sky scene. 
Ugh, oh, thank God, she's walking. Maybe that means something will finally happen. Ready? Stop doing that. They end up finding an ancient Halloween mask burial ground, but apparently no one told them what happens when you disturb one of those. A Sasquatch comes in, beats the crap out of you, and steals your girlfriend. Someday I'm gonna get that filthy animal! Now you may have noticed that something kind of happened in that last scene, and that is not something that this movie's too comfortable with. How can we waste more time? There we go, a party montage. That ought to eat up another couple minutes. Ah! Come on, Dum Dum, cut it out, you big creep! We'll just make him stop. Hey, come on, Dum. Knock it off. She called me a big slob. No one will be seated during the thrilling dicking around in the middle of the woods being an asshole scene. The biker who got Sasquatch's big foot up his ass finally wakes up and decides to call for help. You got a phone I can use? Yes, it's over there on the wall. Don't make it a long distance call. It's local. Oh, really? Because judging by that phone, it looks like you're calling the 20s. But he's not calling Alexander Graham Bell, just the stereotypical sheriff that doesn't believe him. Now, what you say, I ain't denying. But do you know how many calls I get a year from people who claim they see these things? I mean, they're almost as bad as those crazy stories about missing persons and people finding bodies in the woods. And frankly, I'm tired of people wasting my time with them. Jasper, however, thinks there's something to the story and decides to try and capture the Sasquatch and make money off of it. I would say that this is the most embarrassing thing that John Carradine's ever done for money, but I am way too familiar with the guy's filmography. So later that night, or later that day for night, they set out to find the monster. Okay, they're out hunting Bigfoot. So, does this mean we'll finally get to see some action? Oh god, not another driving scene. Fast forward. Okay, the captured women. Still not a whole lot going on, but at least the scenery's a little better. It turns out the Sasquatches have brought the women here to mate with them in order to save their dying race. Oh yeah, there's actually a whole bunch of Bigfoot monsters in this movie, so I guess a more accurate title would have been Big Feet. There's even some little baby Sasquatches. Jeez, he looks like Chaka from Land of the Lost if he got addicted to heroin. Oh, wait a second, I made a Land of the Lost reference last video, didn't I? Okay, think, 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 think. Oh, I got it. He looks like Lumpy from the Star Wars Holiday Special if he got addicted to heroin. There, now I don't have to do a Star Wars Holiday Special reference for a little while. Have they done anything to you yet? No. That's the odd part of it. Yeah, I'll say, this movie is excruciatingly tame. Look, not to sound like a pig or anything, but let's say it's the early 70s and you're going to see a movie called Bigfoot. Chances are you're not going to see Oscar caliber writing and acting. No. You're going for one reason, and one reason only. To get yourself some trashy exploitation movie kicks. I mean, just look at the plot of this movie. It's about big hairy monsters trying to mate with human women while being stalked by a motorcycle gang. That is a premise full of sleaze potential, but this movie doesn't meet any of it. Instead, all we get are endless scenes of people walking. It's almost like the filmmaker said, hey, do you like schlocky, low-budget exploitation movies, but hate all that fun violence and nudity that goes along with them? Well then, have we got a movie for you. You know, there are few things in this world sadder than an exploitation movie that doesn't even have the balls to exploit anything. In fact, who the hell said this was the greatest monster movie since King Kong? I want to know. The Post? Oh yeah, The Post. That's a quality publication. I enjoy reading it almost as much as the newspaper. Oh, and the most realistic, horrifying film ever? Maybe they met Harry and the Hendersons. Well, there's clearly no mating going on here. Are Jasper and Elmer doing anything? Ugh, they're still walking. You're serious? Couldn't they at least play some music or something? And they're still walking. You know, considering the amount of action in this scene, I think I got the perfect piece of music right here. So after walking for what feels like forever, they finally spot one of the creatures, but end up getting ambushed. 
And it just cuts away right there. There's finally a bit of action in this movie and it cuts to a different scene. Because why the hell not? You know what? Let's try this with other movies. Let's say you're just about to watch an exciting fight scene and just as it gets started, it cuts away to something else. Ah! Kind of annoying, isn't it? Anyway, the rest of the bike gang finally decides to go looking for their friend, and eventually they end up at this cabin in the woods where the Jodan Baker biker asks them for help. What's that mean? That's true. For bad medicine. Yeah, what's the word for shitty movie? Hey, wait! Look at this, baby! Dynamite. That's been back there for years. I don't care. I'm gonna take it along just in case. That was a weird line delivery. So now Jasper and Elmer are tied up along with the women. Well, I guess it could be worse. At least they're not walking or driving anywhere. What are those critters gonna do with us? They don't seem to have much use for men. They'll probably kill all of you. No, that would mean something exciting might happen. Instead, we just get scenes like this. Remember all the money we made in that carnival? That big snake from South America? All those people paid 50 cents just to see it? Oh, yes, I remember that, Cousin Hawks. No one will be seated during the thrilling talking about past business ventures. Oh, for Christ's sake, will somebody do something, please? Eventually, the Sasquatches decide to sacrifice the blonde woman to a bigger Sasquatch. I guess maybe he's the big foot of the title and the rest of them are all just medium foots. One thing, though, on the back of the DVD, it says that he's almost 12 feet tall, but judging by the movie, I'd say he's about 6 foot 6 tops. Which is pretty tall, I guess. Oh, and the part on the cover where he lifts a motorcycle above his head? Yeah, that doesn't happen. God damn it, first Land the Time Forgot doesn't have an underwater T-Rex and now this. Why do these movies have to lie to me? He does end up fighting a bear, although the movie is so poorly lit it just looks like two vague black shapes rolling around. Look at this, it's so dark it might as well be footage of two shadows humping. You know what? I've had it, movie. I demand that you do something to get my attention right now. Some violence. Some action. Something! <laughs> what you call that violence? Do I gotta do everything myself? <laughs> Alright, let's wrap this up. So one of the bikers throws dynamite in a cave, which kills all the creatures, I guess, at this point I don't really care, and everyone goes back to their regular lives, which I assume means more walking and driving. Well, Slim, we finally got him. It wasn't you, mister. It was Beauty did him in. You're not King Kong. Stop acting like it. I guess it's all over now. Yeah, thank God for that. Man, talk about a movie not living up to its poster. This is one of the most boring movies I've ever seen. You could watch that famous footage of Bigfoot walking slowed down so it was 80 minutes and it would still have more action than this. Not to mention less walking. There are a couple of mildly funny moments and John Carradine manages to be entertaining even when he's clearly slumming for a paycheck, but that's not nearly enough to recommend this piece of shit. Some movies are so bad they're good, and others are so bad they're just fucking bad. And that's very true of this movie, because Bigfoot is one missing link that should have stayed missing. Well, that's all for now. Until next time.